So let's start by seeing how we would move the minute hand. So let's click on the minute hand, go to content, and press the new script button. What this does is creates the um, Second Life's default script. It comes up with a, a little bit of text that says hello avatar, and we'll see why that is in a second. Um, if we touch the object, it'll say touched. So let's see why that is. I'm going to rename it before we do anything else. I'm going to call this move minute hand. And let's have a let's double click it and see what's inside it. It's pretty simple currently. Um, you can almost make it out without knowing anything about the script at all. State entry, in other words, this is the first thing that uh, first line of code that gets run when the script starts. Anything that's in state en entry, uh, and it's saying the text "Hello Avatar" on channel zero. If I hover the cursor over. Uh, the command it explains uh, roughly what it does anyway. So the first parameter is the channel number, and the second parameter is a is a string of text that'll be displayed. Channel zero is the um, default channel that everyone can hear. So it says hello avatar, and that's what we saw appearing down here on the screen. And then if it's touched, as we did, it says the word touched. So it's pretty simple to understand what this um, uh, default bit of um, script is doing, but obviously it isn't what we want to do because we want to start moving clock hands and so on. So I'm going to get rid of the touch bit. We don't really want to react to touches to our minute hand. And I don't want it to say hello avatar. Um, instead what I want it to do is um, execute a piece of code every second to check the time. Now, The command to do that is ll set timer event and we need to tell it how many seconds this uh, this should be between events. I'm going to put one second in. So what this says is uh, every second execute a piece of code. Which piece of code is it going, is it going to execute? It's a, a very special piece of code that's called timer. So let's define that now. So in other words, uh, as soon as the script starts it runs this command which continually calls this block of code we're going to write in here every second. So, so far so good. So what we need to do is find out how many minutes past the hour it is, because um, if we know that, then um, we can figure out where to rotate the minute hand to. So to start with, let's get the, the current time. So if we define a variable called now, we're making it a float. A float is a number that's got uh, decimals as well as a uh, whole value, so like 3.54. Um, so float now will hold the time and we get the time from something called get wall clock. And get wall clock is just a function and if I hover over it it'll tell you get the time in seconds since midnight. So what should we do next? Well let's try and convert those number of seconds since midnight into number of minutes since midnight. So if we create a variable called minute and divide the number of seconds since midnight by 60, um, that should give us number of minutes. Now the, the only complication is that we're defining the minute as an integer, in other words a whole number, and now is a float which is a whole number and decimal. So we need to make sure these are the same otherwise it's going to get upset and confused. We do that by putting integer in front of the word now, which means it will convert now to an integer and then divide it by 60. Uh, and that's called casting. Uh, but what it does is means we now have a value of minute, which is the number of minutes since midnight. We're still not there, though, because we haven't got the number of minutes past the hour. Maybe a good next step would be to figure out what the hour is. So let's do that. So we'll say integer hour, uh, and that's the number of minutes divided by 60. So we're, we're getting closer. Now in order to work out how many minutes there are past the hour, if we multiply that hour back um, by um, 60 again and subtract that from the number of minutes since midnight, that'll leave us with the remainder of minutes past the hour. Um, so let's do that. So now number of minutes past the hour, subtract from that the hour times 60. So now we're in a pretty good position because we have the number of minutes past the hour and all we need to do, you would think, would be pretty simple, is just rotate the clock into the appropriate position. Now what would the appropriate position be? Now remember when we were looking at the clock before we 
worked out that um, 30 degrees is 1 o'clock and 90 degrees was 3 o'clock and so on. Why is that? Well, it's pretty simple, really. Um, if you think of a circle that has got 360 degrees in it and an hour that has 60 minute positions in the circle, um, that means that every minute is 360 divided by 60 um, degrees. So every minute is 6 degrees, which is why 5 past is 5 times 6 is 30, is 30 degrees. Um, so now we have the number of minutes past the hour, we just need to multiply it by 6 and then put that in the rotation uh, field and it will rotate it to the correct position, which seems pretty simple and should be pretty simple, but there is a slight complication unfortunately. The function we would use to rotate the hand is something called LL set local rot, um, which is rotating the um, the hand um, within the object that we're creating, which is the, the clock as a whole. If I hover over it, it tells me that it takes the parameter of rotation, so of type rotation. Now, the you, you would think that a rotation object would contain an x, y, and z value, um, much the same way as we were we were typing in here. If I go back here, so these rotation values, and you could simply set them to the values you want, and off you go. Uh, it's somewhat more complicated than that, unfortunately. Um, and Second Life uses a um, something called a quaternion to define a rotation. And it all gets a little bit deep and I would suggest um, this is probably a good time to have a look at the um, LSL wiki which is on the the internet. Um, so let's let's just zip off there and, and take a look at it because um, it will help you understand what we need to do.